Kia ora team and welcome to our sixth video on Achievement Standard 91328 where we are taking um, just a second look at some factors affecting projectile motion. So the learning outcome for today is to be able to define and describe factors that affect projectile motion. So again, first few slides will be the same as the last video, um, but just to remind you, a projectile can be defined as any object travelling through the air such as a bullet shot from a gun or a tennis ball hit by a racket. Every projectile follows a path, which is called its trajectory. Now, when we think of projectiles in sport, we usually think of objects that have been thrown or hit, such as balls and javelins. However, the human body can also be a projectile. So think of, uh, say, gymnasts uh, launching themselves from a beat board or, or swimmers who are mid-dive. As, um, as discussed in the last video, the factors that affect um, Projectile motion can be a, a range of um, different factors and the ones that we have been looking at are angle of release and height of release, also speed of release, um, and today we are going to focus on spin, gravity and air resistance. Alright, so as a projectile moves through the air it can rotate about its own axis. The effect of, uh, this has on the projectile is called the Magnus effect. Um, this effect was first explained by Gustav Magnus in 1853. So the Magnus effect really explains the movements of spinning balls in sports such as soccer, baseball, tennis, table tennis, volleyball, golf and cricket. As you can see there in the, uh, the baseball picture there is, is putting a lot of spin um, on the ball which is causing it to curve. As a spinning ball moves through the air, it forces air around the ball to rotate, creating an air pressure difference between the two sides. An area of high pressure, which you can see up the top, and an area of low pressure, which you can see at the bottom of that image. The side of the ball that rotates in the opposite direction to the flight path creates the low pressure area. And what this does is it sucks the ball and curves its trajectory because objects must move from a high pressure environment to a low pressure environment. So gravity acts on a body to give it mass. The greater the weight of an object, the greater the influence of gravity upon it. Basically, gravity decreases the height a projectile can obtain, and that's, that's pretty straightforward. Air yeah, resistance. Gravity acts upon the vertical component of a projectile, but air resistance works on the horizontal component of a projectile's path. We can see this clearly when we consider the flight path of a badminton shuttlecock. Because of the specific designs in the shuttlecock, such as the materials used, the shape and the weight, it offers a great deal of air resistance. When you consider the overhand and underhand clear in this image, Sorry about that. You can clearly see that when the shuttlecock begins to slow, air resistance has a significant effect on the trajectory or flight path of the projectile. Even on the shot types that utilise a high speed of release, and those ones are the, um, are the smash and the um, overhead drop, okay, you can still see the effects of air resistance towards the end of, um, of its flight path. Okay, so just a just a, a very quick look at um, spin, gravity, and air resistance, and how um, those factors can affect the projectile. Um, so please get your whisk sheet done before the next theory session. Um, come up with a really good question, and and I'd like us to improve a little bit on the, the types of questions that we are developing um, to discuss in class. So if you can do that, that would be great. Cheers.